it's so good for you and it tastes amazing. from Eat, Pray, Crunch, and today I am doing a video on bone broth. This is a topic that I have wanted to do for a very long time because bone broth is such an essential part of a very healthy diet. You've probably heard that this is actually an increasing trend, but it's actually a practice that's a really old traditional practice. Almost every traditional culture, um, people use all parts of the animal and including the bones and boiling down the bones to make broth. First of all, let me just tell you a couple of the top main reasons that bone broth is really good for you and um, why you want to consume it on a regular basis. And then I will talk about how to make it. The main reason that bone broth is so good for you is because it is so important for your digestion. They've actually done a lot of studies showing that it can really help heal various inflammatory digestive problems and it also just helps heal lots of inflammatory conditions in general. It's very good for reducing inflammation in the body. One of the main reasons that most people are familiar with is that like for example chicken soup is really good for you when you're sick and um, bone broth is like one step above just your average like chicken stock. A fair number of studies showing that it actually helps inhibit infection in the body so there's actually science showing why it's important to have um, bone broth or like chicken soup or any kind of bone, you know, bone-based beef, pork, any kind of animal-based broth when you're sick because it actually does help reduce and inhibit infection. So my husband and I were just talking about the probable science behind why bone broth um, helps reduce infection and it's probably because um, the marrow in bones um, is actually what produces white blood cells. So when you are consuming the marrow from the animal, the, it is what is required to make white blood cells in the animal, it probably helps to make white blood cells in your own body which probably helps then fight infection. And because it's coming from bones, it obviously has a lot of calcium in it and it also has a lot of magnesium. And those are really important for hair, skin, and nails and also your own bones. So those are the main health benefits of consuming bone broth on a regular basis. And the great thing about it is that it is a really, really easy way to get protein into your diet. I was reading that it's not a complete protein by itself, but when it's assimilated with other, you know, vegetables and um, even with, you know, pieces of meat and whatnot, it actually helps you absorb the nutrients in those better. If you can't afford to, you know, buy a whole lot of meat on a regular basis, or if you can't afford to buy a lot of like grass-fed, pastured, you know, that kind of meat product, um, this is a very affordable way to do so. So you can just use it as a base for your soups and even just drink it straight up and it's really good for you. The other amazing thing about bone broth is that it is like every chef's secret to the most amazing sauces and soups. And I can tell you this from experience now that since I've started using bone broth instead of like regular, you know, like chicken chicken broth from a can, um, the flavor is, I can't even describe it. It's out of this world. It is so, so good. It is rich and it is flavorful and it just gives this body um, to soups that I had never tasted before. So it, I mean, that by itself is an amazing reason to use bone broth too. So I've got all of my bones in my crock pot here. Last week I had actually made a whole chicken and we saved all of the bones and I we also had a rotisserie chicken from the store and um, saved all the bones from that as well including all the back and you know ribs, legs, um, wings, everything and this is just the remaining carcass. What I have down in the bottom is chicken feet and you can get chicken feet and like chicken backs, um, like all of the bony parts of the chickens that you know most people don't normally think to use, you can get them for extremely cheap. I got these at our natural foods co-op and they are from a local farm. They are pastured chickens, fed very high quality diet, 
very healthy lifestyle. I only paid $4.30 for an entire bag of chicken feet. So seriously doing bone broth is like a dirt cheap way to get really good nutrition from meat products if you can't afford to pay for whole cuts of you know pastured meat. And it's also just an excellent way to use all parts of an animal if you eat a whole chicken and you have all the bones afterwards or you know Thanksgiving if you save all the bones from your Thanksgiving turkey um, you can make an amazing bone broth and then all of that you know hard-earned work that you put into making your beautiful Thanksgiving turkey is going even further because you're getting all that nutrition out of the bones as well. You can do this with any kind of bone and that's the other thing is um, if you do it with any kind of bone you can get them very cheap at a natural food store or butcher even. Um, you can just ask for soup bones or look in their freezer section. They often have soup bones for dirt cheap. I've gotten a bag of soup bones for like five dollars. Usually the, those soup bones are coming from pigs or cows, so pork or beef, um, and they are just, you can see the marrow because they chop up the bones so that the marrow is more accessible just for this purpose, and you can actually see the marrow in there and it's pretty interesting. And you can also do a seafood version. I have found at our local natural food market that sometimes they rotate what spare animal parts they have in their freezer and they have had spare fish heads, which is very interesting, um, from very, very high quality, I think it was coho Alaskan salmon. Now, if you've ever looked in the seafood section, you'll know just how darn expensive a coho filet is, but the heads alone were like seven or eight bucks, and there were like seven or eight of them in there. <laughs> so definitely a very economical way to get very good nutrition. So there's all of my bones, chicken feet, carcass, everything in my crock pot. So next I'm also just going to add for extra flavor a couple vegetables. I'm going to toss in an onion, carrots, and celery, and just a couple of spices just for good flavor. And then we will fill it up with water. All right, I chopped up my vegetables, just one onion, uh, two big sticks of celery, and three big carrots. And as you can see, it only took me about two or three minutes of chopping because it's very coarse. This is not made for eating straight up, it's just for the flavor and the nutrition in it, and you're boiling it down. So you hardly have to spend any time chopping, and you just toss them in there. And now we're going to pour in enough water to cover it all. And preferably, um, you wanna use filtered water. And for adding some trace minerals and bringing out some of the flavors in the broth, I'm adding some uh, pink salt or uh, natural sea salt, which is full of good trace minerals. So I'm putting in for about four quarts of water, I'm putting in about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit less of salt. And then, um, this is a really important key ingredient. Um, I'm using Bragg's organic apple cider vinegar. Probably any kind of vinegar would work though, actually. Um, what the vinegar does is it helps uh, break down the bones so that the marrow can come out more easily, and it helps um, assimilate all those minerals into the soup. So for every two quarts of water, you want one tablespoon of vinegar. So this is about four quarts, so I'm gonna do two tablespoons. All right, and then you just turn your crock pot on low and you can do it for eight to 24 hours. So that's what makes doing this in a crock pot such a good option is that it just does low and slow for so long. Um, and then you're not wasting that energy um, on your stovetop. Like we have a, a gas stove range, so we wouldn't want to leave the stove on overnight. So the crock pot is a great option for us. So I'm putting it on 20 hours because that is how long my crock pot will go. Now, one optional thing that you can do to bear in mind, if, especially if you're doing this on a stovetop, um, it's a little easier to do this step if it's on a stovetop. Um, but once you bring it to a boil, if you you know put it on high first and bring it to a boil, there will be a bunch of like foam that rises to the top. Some people say that you want to skim that foam off because it's impurities. 
um, that you want to remove from the broth but if you're getting your meat or your bones from a good source from you know good pastured source um, there won't be that many impurities so I'm gonna be skipping that step and just putting it you know straight on low for 20 hours so um, up to you and you know just something to consider depending on where you got your bones from so I'm going to turn it on and I will check in with you guys when it's done tomorrow all right guys it's the next day and you can see that everything is all cooked down there and it's still quite hot so um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some tongs and I have a bowl over here and I'm just going to remove all of the vegetables and the bones and just put them in the bowl and then throw them away and um, after that I'm just going to let the broth cool all right, so I have removed all of the vegetables and the bones, and this is the nice thick broth that is remaining. And this is a really high quality broth because it has been simmering for almost 24 hours. So, you know, the longer it goes, um, the better it gets. And so now I have these little plastic containers. You know, I think we just saved these from when we've gotten takeout in the past. So um, they're perfect because they're just a one cup size and I do prefer to freeze things in plastic so they don't break. Um, and so, even though generally I prefer to use glass, but when I'm freezing things, I use plastic. Um, and I like saving them in the one cup size because that's generally a good size for using in recipes later. So as I pour the broth into these, I just put a little strainer over it and I take a ladle here and the strainer just gets out um, any of the remaining bits of bone that I may have missed or you know little bits of meat and that kind of thing and just goes straight in there you can see there's still just a little bit that's caught by the strainer there so I'm just going to do that for the rest of these and the remaining I am actually going to just leave in the crock pot and use it for making some chicken noodle soup so that is all that's simple it's amazing it's so good for you and it tastes amazing as a base for soup even during flu season um, I read that if you just drink a little bit of this stuff every day it just really helps boost your immunity as well lots of great ways to use this hope this was a helpful video for you if you like to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to head on over to our Facebook page and check that out. If you're new here, welcome. Thanks for subscribing and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.